It's like I can't just buy a plate. You know what I mean? We can't just buy a pound. Nope. Or fucking, or whatever, or a kilo, or whatever. You're buying eighths, a certain number of or eighths. quarters or ounces. A hundred eighths. You're buying a case of eighths. You know what I mean? Like, like it's like it's. I don't know. Like it's at, like it's any other commodity that you have to buy to mm -hmm. sell in a store. It's already broken yeah. down. So the SOPs, one of the main SOPs that we had when we were trapping is fucking breaking the shit down, buying the shit and breaking it down. We don't even don't have do to do that. We yeah. had to adjust into a whole new pricing structure. What's that? That's the, the blue dream. Yeah. This is the blue dream? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it smells like blue dream. It does. It tastes, yeah, it like, tastes blue like blue dream too. They <laughs> they totally have the same weed in both these jars, without a doubt. Yeah, that's the milk Ooh. duds technically. That's blue dream. Stage one, it is. Stage one dispensary. Stoop to store. Legacy to legal. You know how we do. Yeah, yeah. Set it off. Uh huh. Season two, episode two. Boop, boop. Let's go. Uh huh. I don't know if it's gonna get edited yeah, yeah. that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we don't know if we it's gonna know, be episode two. Uh, it's gonna be but one of the episodes. It's gonna be yeah. something. But we back. We back. It's, oh, the, yeah. second one, it's the second one we tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the taped one. like Jesus Christ. Tape, tape word. Oh shit! If Ricky was here, he got that old school camera. Yeah, he's you know, got a camera. This, this, uh, this is definitely Blue Dream though. So yeah. shout out to these guys. Yeah. So let's ha talk about what hashtag Honey is the company. Hashtag Honey. We 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 don't have this in the store at, at the time of filming this. No, we right? don't. This is just something that got brought into the store as a sample. Just today. Scotty had today. Scotty has some. We're gonna we're sh we're we're bringing it on the pod to uh, test it out and decide what what this is how it happens though. This is. It gets shared amongst the staff, and we, and then everybody decides whether it's the, whether we bring it in. Sometimes Will just makes the decision, and then we all get it though. <laughs> it just yeah. pops up. Cause, cause Will, Will be knowing. So shout out Will. Shout out to Will. So yeah, as for this though, companies hashtag honey. They're all. Uh, did we talk about the dab goes last week? Yes. The dab and goes. The dab go. We did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. So we did. the dab go device, same same crew doing this. Oh, we same crew. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. He, he's the one who brought those in too, mm. and he brought these by. And uh, I've seen a lot of Blue Dream on the market. And uh, Blue Dream, I haven't seen in its real rendition in a long time. Yeah, yeah. And this I'd is say Rolling this is Green it. had the closest. So and that this, I've seen and in a minute. This is it. But this, this is, tastes yeah. and smells like that old Blue Dream for real. Yeah, yeah. I got sick of Blue Dream. I didn't want to smoke Blue Dream. I didn't smoke it for a good decade. Now I started missing it recently. Yeah. But yeah, I got sick of that strain. But I'm glad it's back. And this is a real rendition of it. So shout out to their growers over there. They got a good Blue Dream cut. Nice. And um, this tropical cheese is very nice too. Um, we're gonna light that in a minute. That's uh a very I, f I forget what else is crossed with. There's a gelato in it, and you can tell it's heavy on the gelato turps. I got some it almost pop smells blue like cheese gelato that we'll smoke. That's with. Much uh, I know we don't have we don't have these in stock at the time of that we shot this, but we they'd be in and out. The pup I like the pup. Those shit. fly when we get yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. So go good. crazy. The pup I, I suggest them yeah. all the time. Oh yeah. yeah, all the time. So, Any and, uh, of the puff pre rolls. Yeah, the puff pre rolls are definitely the terpy. There are terpy. You pull them out, you smell them. You're like, they oh, this smoke is nice good. and even too. And they smoke even. They taste good. Yep. The, the burn the slow. Profiles are always good. good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I definitely am down. I'm here for Puff. I'm cool. For Puff. Yeah, Puff be killing shit. Uh, great, great price point too. And then I got on the uh, the uh, opposite end of the price point spectrum, some heavy hitters: Diamond, Garlic Cane. Uh, but it is coming in at a at a forty one percent. So let's see what that's hitting for. Forty one percent. Forty one percent. The yeah. diamonds, man. Diamond infused. And diamonds yeah, crazy. heavy hitters. Uh, they kind of go hard with their potency. You know, they that's like their fucking thing. Heavy that's, the that's, the point. Heavy. that's the point. They go hard with the potency for mm -hmm. sure. Damn, I'm trying to think of the other strain these guys gave me like a week or two ago. They just gave me a little bit of it, and it was really fucking good. It was one of the best strains I had on the 
wreck market so far yeah and i was really excited about from, it from who from these guys, from these guys? yeah oh, yeah right. um so much <sighs> so good can't remember it yeah 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 no i don't know why i'm drawing a blank because you're fucking stoned i am yeah that's exactly why i'm drawing a blank <laughs> ladies and gentlemen <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about uh entrepreneurship since now like that's what we'd be doing we're fucking entrepreneurs Buda Buda. in the store this is uh a year a year into it of like heavy being an entrepreneur and running a running a like a multi-million dollar retail store which is it, selling a product in a, a like a emerging product in a new legal market all the pitfalls all the And yeah, and the mindsets and, 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 and how you get to do it in a way that, that stays successful and what you have to do to to do that. Right. And uh, one of the things when we were prepping for the show that we came up with talking about was uh, the SOPs, which at, it, there are so, so many fucking acronyms in business, though, that you have to learn. So SOPs, yeah. is it stands for Standard Operating Procedures. So... It's really important to have good SOPs put in place that allow you to have systems that uh, people can take on and, and train others to do. So that you're a good entrepreneur isn't somebody that can do everything. A good entrepreneur is somebody who can delegate the responsibilities and train people how to do the things that they that need to be done mm -hmm. and and develop and can develop systems that will that are interchangeable in that way right so i feel like we've definitely managed to do that here mm -hmm. right yeah it took some time too. it took some time and like those those sops evolved over time hell yeah you know i feel like that was you the trial and error of the it. The trial and like error. Like we have to figure out because if there isn't any SOPs in place, there's nothing to follow from. You know what I mean? So you kind of just jump in it, do what you think is right, and then you figure out, oh, well, this would work better if we do it this way. Or let's try to switch this up or maybe tighten this over here a little bit. Exactly. And that, and it, and we've talked about this like a thousand times, but a good team is super important too. And like, and just that right there is why mm -hmm. is like a, an example of why having a good team is important because when you're doing when you're creating SOPs from I mean our SOPs exist right so we brought we brought in some idea of what of how we wanted things to work but we kind of like sculpted it from from that mm -hmm. not we, we didn't we didn't like take someone else's SOPs and say this is how we're gonna fucking do it because right. first of all it's an emerging market that mm -hmm. the SOPs from other markets might not even work in this market they don't it's not even the same can't do the same types of different um, legalities different right, restrictions different th certain things aren't compliant mm -hmm. you know what I mean so you gotta like everything kind of had to start from one place would get moved into New York. Yeah, you know? definitely. It started in cannabis, but in legal cannabis, but moved into New York legal cannabis specifically. So then some of those SOPs had to uh, start in one place and end in another. And, we, and we've done a very good job as a team mm -hmm. and as a unit sure. of figuring that out. And, right. You know, learning how to pivot. Learn, yeah, learning how to pivot. And I think. Um, there was also that time too where that was part of that learning curve was we had to learn how to pivot. Like we had to learn what that even was. Like, oh, okay, we were doing it this way and now we're gonna do it this way. Cause as it got created and we're learning how to do everything, after a while of doing that, it's like, well, now we know how to do it. Yeah, so then oh when no, you try we, to we change that, added, you know what I mean? added things into the process. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, where we, you know, would find holes, and then mm -hmm. we had to plug them. Shit, it's like, oh, right. hold on, hold on. Yes. Now, nah, hold on. We got to add this into this part of the process to make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, uh, everybody gets the right fucking thing in the bag. Right. You know what yeah. I mean? Because, you know, that sometimes that's uh, that's hard to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So we got to just 
put right. all the things in place to make sure that that's not hard to accomplish. You're right. You know? And that's kind of what I was alluding to is that from the uh, from the soldier perspective, I'll say, is like you got to, like for me, I had to learn to be fluid with, yeah. with those things. You know what I mean? Because like sometimes a rule, sometimes it's a little tweak. Like a, a, with the change to a SOP, sometimes it's a small little like, oh, we're just going to nudge it. But then sometimes it's like, oh, remember that thing that we told you that we were doing? We're not doing that anymore at all. Now we're doing this completely doing different this. thing over here. Yeah. And you need to know that now. Not to that, by the starting time you, now. By the time you get back on the floor, you need to make that whole change. <laughs> and tell everybody, just, and let everybody, let everybody, else, everybody know, else know. Make sure they make that change. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's part of the pivot. And yeah. that's part of what you need to know how to do is be able to be like, okay, it's not even just me that needs to know how to make this change, but now we gotta I need be to able to make this, sure that's that. That's why the systems have to be teachable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's that's really like the that's the part that's uh, that's a one of the prime the most important piece and be like the hard one of the harder things to do sure. is to make sure that it's like totally. And like and I, like I I was I didn't necessarily even always fucking do that. There was people who came in and fucking were like, oh, I t took what I what I knew how to do mm -hmm. and said, yo, this is how this is how we can make it so that everybody can do what the fuck's going on in your brain. And I'm like, oh shit, that's mm -hmm. great. Yeah, let's do that. Right. Cool. Let's do that. And then uh, that's that's happened to, like. You know, a couple times that, and that. So the then creating those systems and those processes are, are paramount to the being successful. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that um, malleability is really like when you can really how you said it's the one of the most difficult things, one of the most difficult things, and but it's also one of the most rewarding things is like because when you can get that, yeah, and you can get it as a whole as a unit and know that that's how we're all gonna move <laughs> it's it's like you you kind of unstoppable at that point because then you know how to pivot through whatever comes your way and then if something does come that you don't know you're already used to doing the thing that you don't know you know what i'm saying like you're already used to overcoming foreign obstacles as a unit yeah yeah. And we could say like, oh, remember when we did this? We already did this. This is the same thing like before. It's just a new version, a new chapter of that book. Um, you know, a, a quick observation. Mm. Like, um, my man got the mic. Oh, oh shit! Yeah. 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 Camera angle on your ass. Get out of here. So like, a quick observation that y'all might find funny is like, just for everyone out there, he just pulled up. He never has a mic. Do it, bro. Now he's just holding this big ass mic in front of you. For the first time ever. That's fine. New SOP. New SOP. New SOP. Hell yeah. We need an audio track for you. That's hilarious. We might find it funny because, like, I if we if we think about it, and like when we isn't all in the legacy market, we had SOPs then. Like, imagine like back when we would get say a pound and we just breaking it down. We or like we had rituals to where like I will take that pound, break it down into ounces, break this much into eighths, break. But every time it's the same it's SOP. It's ritual, same yeah. SOP. Yeah. 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 Customers, yeah. they know yeah. they gotta hit you. Like I had many SOPs. So yeah, yeah like yeah. talk about it. What was some of your like uh strict? A like, lot of wait. a lot of it was more like when I was making my edibles and cartridges uh -huh. and like you know like you know I had my fucking you know recipes and things i followed consistent. down to a fucking t you know yeah. every time down to the you know the, the milliliters and you know like the tiniest bit and tiniest increments you know and you did it for and a reason like to make a certain profit because like even with absolutely a scale, each fucking matter when you're breaking it down in the legacy and like you oh, gotta yeah. have sop you know what's then. crazy so i the difference the big difference mm -hmm. between the legacy market yeah. and and the legal market which took me a second to get used to i didn't even really i'm still not really 100 percent used to it i think and i feel like at some point it's going to shift anyway but like you gotta buy it by it's already packaged so you gotta buy it by the increment mm -hmm. that it's packaged in and it's priced like that mm -hmm. so it's like i can't just buy a plate you know what i mean we can't just buy a pound nope. or fucking 
or whatever, or a kilo or whatever, you're buying eighths, a certain number of or eighths. quarters or ounces. A hundred eighths, you're buying a case of eighths. You know what I mean? Like, like it's like it's, I don't know, like it's, like it's any other commodity that you have to buy to mm -hmm. sell in a store. It's like broken down already. It's already broken yeah. down. So the SOPs, one of the main SOPs that we had when we were trapping is fucking breaking the shit down, buying mm -hmm. the shit and breaking it down. We don't even yeah. have do to do that. We yeah. had to adjust into a whole new pricing structure and then base it off of profit margins and shit and then try to run our business in a way where our margins stayed profitable. You know, our margin stays profitable. So it's, and that's, that's also, you know, has to be taken into consideration with all the taxes and the fucking, and the cost of doing business and, and which is paying the staff. So we have like 29 employees and so we're just 28 employees, I think now. So we're just like, just constantly being able to maintain that, that staff. And, and like, I think a big thing for us is, is like paying a fair wage which is i don't know i don't from what i've read about other what like the average dispensary pays in new york state were like several dollars an hour more for our employees than what the average dispensary is paying across the state so i don't know i think that has a lot to do with our vibe too is like just you know we're just, everybody's happy that's how we try to keep it. And I think that's yeah. important as an entrepreneur is to try to maintain a, uh, a happy staff. And that, and also that is, I think, one of, one of the hardest things to do, too. Mm -hmm. One of the more important. Again, everything that's really fucking important is not the easiest part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's like the hardest part. And it's, just, you know. That's life. Just so, you're juggling yeah. so many personalities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So fucking many. 28 of them to be exact. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More yeah. if you count ownership. And the, not to and mention the, the customers. Yes. Absolutely. That's not to mention the customers. You know? Yeah. I mean, and if, you, and if you break it all down, you know, we're we're over a year in. Like the honeymoon period's over. We've mm -hmm. we've maintained a pretty pretty ex like ex almost exclusively the same staff. It's like. A couple of new people here and there, but in general, everybody who's here now has been here yeah. for like a long, a time. while now. A At least long, a year. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So we're we're keeping a good. Is Moak like, still consistent our Consistent staff. But Dom. Oh, Dom. Yeah. Of like of yeah, and we ha we've had a couple a couple yeah, of new people and a couple that, people yeah. have left, but in general, for the most part, for the most part, if it's stable and we're and I think that's also. A thing like we are, we're all like learning how you gotta you become a family totally or and you learn you learn and you know family's hard right <clears throat> everybody's fucking <laughs> yeah right who has a fucking easy family for sure I don't know yeah mm -hmm. you're, but you're allowed to be dysfunctional with your family so then the longer we're all together the more dysfunctional mm -hmm. um, you, you, the more dysfunction you can tolerate, yeah. Quick question. Um, you ever seen the show The Food That Built America? Anybody? The what? The Food That Built America on History Channel? Mm -hmm. No. No. It basically breaks down it's, like. It's pretty self explanatory. Oh, uh, yeah. But um, they did Wendy's and they was talking about how Dave, right? Um, the, it wasn't Wendy's wasn't really doing that well. But when he, uh, Dave is actually the one that invented the drive through. And when he invented the drive through, the, the three. Uh, window drive through that every restaurant has today sales went crazy and they opened up thousands of stores from it it was crazy do you think having a drive through would uh turn up the business on a dispensary or your dispensary is it legal man listen yeah it's legal we, right. the first building we wanted had a drive through we would have been we would have been going crazy forever brother would have been crazy, been crazy. i mean especially I think the, with the online pickups but, yeah. but the drive yeah so if the drive but i think it would be oh. i don't know if it would be uh, uh good or not yeah because okay. it would create such a traffic for what reason for the traffic mm -hmm. Yeah. And we create a bunch of Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A, Chick -fil -A, Chick -fil -A yeah. lines. Well, think forever. about um, like people with up connected stoners they would totally rather not get out of their car if given the choice. They'll mm -hmm. stay in their fucking car and just in sit a there and smoke weed while they're picking while up, they're up their weed. Hell, you know weed? they would. I like, would. 
I would, I would not. No? No. Well, you wouldn't buy from Spencer nine times out of ten anyway. <laughs> Say it. Chill. Chill, man. Chill. Man. Chill. But, Chill. But, uh, um, but don't let people like seeing their weed and all that. And don't you get more option to do that by coming in? And Jay just called me out. You know <laughs> <laughs> no, what he all he said. Hold on, all he said, Scotty, was that if you didn't work at a dispensary, if you you would if you would be out, you'd be buying your weed in the black market still. You're you would be yeah. tapped in. You yeah. wouldn't be still yeah. shopping yeah. at dispensaries. Yeah. Yeah. Like before you worked at a dispensary, did you go to dispensaries? No. no. So that, <laughs> that's, that's, my that's not calling you out. That's, <laughs> that's just what saying that. what it is. You work at a dispensary now, so now you're like mm-hmm. no. But, you know, uh, but you, you know, you, you're, you're no, you know what the fuck in. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're tap, you're, you know, you're, like, like I was tapped in before. Like that's, you know what I mean? I could, I could call fucking a hundred people and get weed from them. Mm-hmm. There's people who don't have that. <laughs> I shit, remember I though. got some shit I know, from you that I, I know. I was like so surprised that I was able to even get. <laughs> Yeah. Just, I was like, what the fuck? I'm yeah. smoking this shit? I know. Oh, shit. I know. I, get, I, get, I could have got weed from a hundred places before I owned a dispensary, but then now... I don't want to say who it is because it's still somebody get, we carry now. I could still get weed from a hundred places now, just the legal people. Mm-hmm. I, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's cool. From you know, it's a, it's a different... And I'm, and you know what's crazy about that is that most, a lot of those guys were legacy. The yep. old, and the ones that weren't came from another market, like a different state, but they were legacy there. Mm-hmm. Or they were probably legacy here, and then went, when the other state became legal, they went out there to be legal. Now they're coming back here to be legal again, but they always started legacy. So, <coughs> And that's the thing. like Entrepreneurs through generations have been doing that shit. Like, mm-hmm. If you think about it, like a bunch of the fucking Kennedys were bootleggers. Mm. Oh, wow. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. That's where the like, original money came from. Yeah, bootlegging. Wow. For yeah. sure. And a lot of a lot of families made money doing that shit. A lot of rich people got in. But man, almost any person that got insanely rich fucked somebody over, or did some mm. shady to get there that's the way I see it yeah I wouldn't compare selling uh, weed on the black market to fucking people over no fuck, no, hell shit. no hell no I'm just saying like there's always just something you know checkered in the past like mm-hmm. even like like Bill Gates like he stole windows you know like there's all this I mean there, there's always like some shady shit that went down in my opinion to get to like a like a mega fortune like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or an empire, you know? Yeah. I, 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 I don't necessarily believe that, but do you think to be a billionaire, you have to do... You got to fuck some people over here. So? Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so. Well, yeah. Well, 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 would to have a B? Yeah. I would I would say, yeah, you definitely... Yeah, you had to squash somebody on your way there. Intentionally? Like, definitely. I mean, there had to be you a point to where a it's choice. like, yeah, 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 yeah definitely. You had, to, you, had to, you, had to be, you had to make a choice whether you were going to whether this because it had to be you or someone else. So someone else got fucked, or you, mm. or you got the W mm. to get when you're playing high stakes enough where you're getting a billion dollars, where you're getting to a billion dollars. Mm. Somebody's losing it's along like, the way, and you're almost inherently guilty and just by may, being a billionaire, like, but, like, because you're part of this system that is and not to personalize it but say uh you expand it to 10 to 15 stores yeah it can make stage one value at close to a billion dollars do you think you could get there i mean i'm sure you got a positive mindset about it but do you think you could get there without fucking somebody over or doing some shit to where shit (laughs) i'd say right i'd say you know there might be motherfuckers out there in the world that feel like I fucked them over already. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like, I don't know. Like, yeah, did I, I fuck, mean, you know what I mean? Like, there's gonna be some smaller dispensaries that, you know, would ha- if we were might, to grow like that, there would have to be some collateral damage. You know, it's not intentional, not but intentional. you know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Not like, intentional. Yeah. It's not not. A, it's it, you know, I see that. but there might you know. 
You never fucking know. Yeah, you asking the tough questions. I People, know, yeah, 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 yeah. you get a fucking mic and you start asking. Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> you see, you stood up for the question. You said, oh, oh, I got a question. <laughs> no, nah, but so. like you know, it's like, yeah, fucking. Fifty just said that this weekend at Invest Fest. He was like, um, he's 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 not in a rush to become a billionaire. Like he's basically a billionaire now. Like probably a hundred thousand, a hundred million away. But yeah. he was talking about how he doesn't, in all honesty, want to be a billionaire. Because once you become, once once you get that stamp on you, one people change. But two, um, if, if the people start saying, "What did he do for me? What did he do for the community to become that?" and all of that. Like, well, you feel like you feel like the difference between. Nine hundred million <laughs> right, and right, a right, billion right, right. is like is like is like that's the difference. Yeah. And also, it's that Forbes article. And also, Fifty is like already that iconic and known for his like business acumen. He's mm-hmm. not like secretive about that mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. Vitamin water and all his all the investments that he, and the money that he's made off of all of his outside rap investments. True. So like. You know, and everybody, I don't know, did vitamin water fucking murder somebody? Who the fuck knows? Mm. I don't know. Mm. No, 50. I mean, 50 sold mad crack. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm, I'm, I'm just being fucking real. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like, I that mean, was, if, if I believe. Uh, you know? <laughs> if I believe, if I believe uh, 50, uh, he definitely has robbed people in the past and done, you know, done all sorts of, you know. Dirty, get rich or die trying. Get rich Absolutely. Or die trying, I mean, right? I'm, I'm just saying there's always, you know, there's always something there. You know? <coughs> now, so that's what I'm saying. I think that's the point. The point is not that, like, uh, did you have to, like, to specifically get to that billion dollars? Mm-hmm. Did you have to, like, did somebody else have to fucking get injured behind yeah. that, right? Mm-hmm. But it's more so, like, to get the grit that's needed mm. to claw your way to a billion dollars, mm. you might have had to do some fucking dirt yeah. in the past. Mm. And to say that, like, even if you look at your favorite billionaire heroes, mm-hmm. like, I feel like part of that allure of them being that is like they, you know, they did some dirt in the past they weren't just like they don't weren't squeaky clean born with a silver spoon in their mouth motherfuckers but they did some gangster shit and fucking got and like got past that point to like get into this other class of fucking of like financial freedom and f- that put them in rooms with f- to get to a billion a billion dollars you know what I mean that's like that that story I think is even more appealing and I don't know so I don't even know that it's necessarily not a badge of honor to have to have to have fucking got there you know scrapping your way mm-hmm. I don't know how do you feel about that Scotty <laughs> You know, a, a billion's a billion. That's how I feel about it. You know, like I, you got you got to do some shit to get it, man. In my opinion, yeah, you just gotta, you know, you kind of gotta get cold hearted with it. But I don't think it's not. Ne- I feel like I don't think it's necessary. I feel like you won't get to the billion with a cold ass heart necessarily. You have to have just maybe done some cold hearted shit. That allowed you to to get to the to a, the other point. Mm-hmm. Like I feel, I don't know. Like that, like, or it's it's so it's either you believe that Bill Gates is now a billionaire and he's like has is like a philanthropic billionaire, or like he's fucking <laughs> he's, uh, trying to control the population. <laughs> no, no, I'm not saying that's that crazy, but. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, the, the opinions on him vary so crazy. It's it's I like know. this and right, this. Right. I think it's right. somewhere. I think it's right. somewhere in the fucking middle. Um, right, yeah, right. somewhere. Nah, right but you head. know, the conspiracies are, are. That's it. That's like that's the billionaire conspiracies are. You know, at least with Elon Musk, you know what he. Cause he'd just be saying it. 
he, he's not he's not holding back no yeah mo, nobody fucking he doesn't he doesn't care if people it's kind, like him it's kind of crazy because he's insanely smart but he's also fucking stupid at the same I know, time I know, he's also I know. fucking dumb and like yeah yeah like he's dumbass, super gullible and, 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 and you know yeah yeah like there's yeah, just yeah. like yeah and he watch and you're just like what the fuck bro like yeah. but he's you know yeah, he's pushed the electric vehicle conversation forward. Motherfucker uh, created know. PayPal. Right. That's the reason why we're using Cash App. Cash and every app other and fucking Venmo. yeah, right, exactly. Right. Like um, fucking, that. That was that was completely game changing. Is the motherfucking worst one out of all of those though? But it uh, but it was first. So I, I don't know. I still think that's the the standard for like uh, buying goods online. Oh no, it is. It you is. Know? But in ter- as a all right. I will say, as a cons- as a customer, PayPal is amazing mm. to buy shit with. I love it. But when I'm trying to get paid through PayPal, oh, I fucking hate that's that shit. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it when I'm sucks. trying to get paid from fucking Venmo, easy. Cash App, easy. I mean, when I'm trying to get it, paid through you know, PayPal. Well, it depends like, on what oh, you're doing. Fucking God, bro. You can have them send it friends and family, or but, yeah, but motherfuckers don't like to do that shit when they when they feel like they're doing business with you. You know what I mean? And they want to and they want to be it. like studio. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, then, yeah. Yo, I had PayPal hold my fucking money for like a month once, bro. And I was like, yo, what the what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That shit was so it made me not want to do business with PayPal, but I get that. I will say that no matter what I buy on the internet, you always get your money. I'm using it through PayPal. Yeah, I'm yeah. buying it through PayPal because it's overseas, right? Yeah, because it's just safe and it's fucking it's way it's safer. Very buyer friendly. Yeah, um, very buyer friendly. Amazingly buyer friendly. So as long as you're that. doing like yeah. goods and services or or uh or invoiced PayPal order, you, yeah, you kind of yeah, get yeah. your money back. Yeah, yeah. But, but if you do friends and family, you're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I've seen so many people get burned in sneaker groups. Like, this one dude, he built up the craziest rapport, dude. He was the sneaker plug. He had everything. He would just hook people up, bless people, preach this fucking community shit built this this facebook group up i mean it was fucking huge and like people were selling heat in there yeah and this is before people were really spending racks and racks on sneakers but the people that were spending racks on racks on sneakers they were in this fucking group so this is right when uh kanye's first yeezys were about to drop and he he built like a really good reputation and people were completely fine with just friends and family and him whatever fucking money they were sending to him Yeah, yeah He was doing pre-orders on the first Yeezy release, and he fucking ghosted everyone. He ghosted oh. everybody, bro. He fucking just pieced the fuck out. Go. Wow, got the Go. bag. The super his na- bag. His name on Facebook was Josh Green. I'm sure it's fake name. <laughs> Josh Green Soul Society. If anyone's listening, dude's wow. a piece of shit. Wow. But yeah, shout out to him for the jokes, man. That shit's <laughs> crazy. He ran wow. off. Wow. <laughs> I I would have never friends and fam- uh I would never friends and family with them regardless. Nah, but the flip side of that was I did this fucking podcast, right? And I like edited a bunch of it. I recorded a bunch and edited a bunch. And I sent the edits out and whatever and then the dude paid me for the shit. And then PayPal held that shit for like three weeks. And I was like, yo, I I'd already done all of the work. You know what I mean? It's like and they were like and their excuse for holding it was they just want to make sure that the 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 person gets what they ordered. I'm yeah. like, yo, I fucking delivered that shit to them before they paid me. They're paying me for services that I already rendered, and they're like, okay, we'll look into it. It's like it took a mad long. I'm like, yo, that it, it, so that's but that because they don't wanna they'll return your money. Yeah, yeah. So that if I fuck, if, you know, as a vendor or whatever, if I'm fucking you, I guess they hold the money so that you can't get fucked. But it's, as a vendor, that shit, that, who's not fucking people, that shit blows. Mm-hmm. That shit is the blow. But also, as a customer, I'm not fucking, ca- I'm not Venmoing you or cash apping you if I don't know you. you know? Yeah, but, fuck that shit. Thanks. Kind of love that. Um, 
So when you start, say, being in a legacy, it's certain things you don't have to not deal with, but it's not even an option. Like when you make, give somebody a product, you get paid right there at that moment. Um, in business, they got these things called net 30s, net yeah. 60s. Yes, yeah, sir. Um, how was adjusting to that to where like before in the legacy, you would get your money there well, now for all of the pounds you sold? Well, no. It so for, I mean, for us, we're not, we're not wholesalers. So. Mm -hmm. For them, it's probably an adjustment. For the brands who have to sell it to us, it's mm -hmm. an adjustment. For us, it oh, so was you don't have to wait for it. we now. Well, like so, for us, we'll just pay people. When uh, now we're at the point where some people just get C or get paid COD, <laughs> but <laughs> everybody who's a net thirty, we just mm -hmm. pay within the month and. And uh, and it's cool that that's how we're, that's like that's because we cycle through enough product that 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 system works really well for us, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that system works well for everybody, mm -hmm. and 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 it may take. <coughs> or that's like the getting you figuring out what that balance is for people or whatever. But in business, though, what is that for? Like, I kind of know, but like, what is the <coughs> banking Great. reason why companies do that? Dealing with bigger companies. Oh, uh, well, really because it's like, it's a rotating cost of for what you're, so you can build your monthly expense and, you, and then you can understand what that monthly rotating expense is. Mm -hmm. And then, so that those net, that net 30 really helps you get there. And, and, and with your accounting, it gives you the, uh, like the enough time leading up so that you can keep your book straight. Because yeah. other than that, it's like, and it, and I think it's very helpful for people who are just starting out mm -hmm. to not have to have all of the money for the, all of the product mm -hmm. up front. Mm -hmm. So if it's a net thirty, they're just fronting it to you for thirty days, and then you just pay them when you sell it. So that is a thing in uh, the, the legal market, fronting weed to dispensary. Like, that's what net thirty. That's what a net thirty is. Oh, and, and weed in, and, 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 and everything and in, in any in any in any business that's a net thirty, net sixty is basically the wholesaler drops off the product to you and then you pay them within thirty days, yeah. and they're you have, you're you have an agreement to pay them within thirty days. Um, mm. And that's it. You have thirty days to pay to pay, pay for it. And if you can cycle through the shit faster than that, and you pay them or whatever, you know. heard of a dispensary not being able to pay their front off. <laughs> Is that a thing? Like, yeah, there's been. There's definitely. I've heard that that that's a thing. Wow. They it's run, hard when they you run off on the plug. When you take us, <laughs> nah. There, you can't really do it. I mean, it, nah. You can't. You have to. It, but it's hard. You end, the, you end up. What you end up with is a lot of stale product, mm -hmm. and then you end up with uh, having to push yourself out to a net sixty or a net ninety. And but I don't think that's happening too often. No. Um, I think that ha I've, I heard of that maybe once or twice happening in the industry wide. So it's not like rampant or anything at all. It's like everybody's pretty much doing their thing and holding their own and being yeah. Well. This is fucking. This is a good market. People fucking smoke weed in New York. Everybody smokes weed in right. New York. You know? right. There has been a significant amount of enforcement on uh, illegal shops. More, more than there was, I'd say, since all of the stores have been opening too. So it's like fucking pat. They're like padlocking people who are selling illegal cannabis. I don't know how that's going, but it hasn't really, like, changed, um, like, too much for us. We're, it's not like we're getting an influx or less. We're, like, pretty consistent with our customer base, uh, number-wise. same Similar number of transactions a day, right? Absolutely. I'm good on that for a minute. Oh, yeah. What you drinking, We got Scotty? the creamsicles from Heirloom. 
That's the new. It's like the orange soda. New shit. Orange cream school soda. New shit. Heirloom cream schools. And they brought the vanilla cokes back. Fire. Yeah. Vanilla cokes are back. With this one? This might be my new favorite. Might be it my might new be favorite. Your new favorite. It's one of them ones. That's an op, right? They're working on something else, too. It's an heirloom op. Yes. They have them in both I feel like and that's, that's their go-to now. Like yeah. I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. the 10 milligrams come before the 5 milligrams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel like, in priority. You feel you like know that's what I'm the, saying? Customer, the customer go-to is a 10 milligram over a 5 milligram at yeah. this point? Yeah, right. Sure. Yeah. It's the same uh, ratio, I'd say, with the high and low potency flour. Flour. Because there's not as there's definitely not as many that come for the low potency flour. Right. They're there. It exists. They exist. But it's no nowhere but near nowhere near the number that are just like yeah, I'm mm-hmm. trying to get fucked. Up. Yeah, I had a dude looking for like eight percent the other day. He's like that's anything good. that's like eight percent. Nah, Jack. Nah, we had the fucking peyote cookies. Is close to that though. Isn't we it? haven't had that in a minute. Yeah. yeah. What? We haven't <laughs> had that. People in a come minute. and ask yeah. for that for it's, that reason still. Yeah. Uh, he must have sold out of them bitches or something. Yeah, that's what it was. A big, a three, a pretty he, sure we sold. He out. has the Bruce Banner. We still we got the Bruce Banner from him now, right? Yeah. From the Harvest dude, mm-hmm. yeah. from Marco. Shout out to Marco. He called me. He called me the other day. I got to Yeah, I got to call him back. Fucking shit tastes good in the motherfucker. Though. What's that yeah. one, Scotty? That's a crazy runs. That's a crazy runs. Yeah. It's Bred by exotic genetics. Same dude that did Grease Monkey last week for Rolling Green. That's another one of his strains. Mm. He's a fucking animal. Crazy runs. Crazy. Crazy. Cut racy. Buddha, Buddha. Buddha, Buddha. Scotty, what you got? You got some kicks for us today, Scotty? Uh, yeah, hopefully we Scotty haven't shown him before. I'm, I'm not prepared. These were just in my car. Scotty's uncertain. That's that's his favorite line. It's like, oh, I forgot. And, uh, mm-hmm. I, these are just, this just I mean, happened to be what I had in my car. Uh, now, it literally is. <laughs> now, if we're if I if if he showed these before, I'm like ex- we're extremely stoned on these shows. So I may be that I don't. That's why I don't remember him showing those, but I, I don't remember. I feel like we haven't. It might have just been an episode that hadn't aired. But, you hey, know. fuck it. It's about to air like a Jordan. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> hey, them shits back to back. These are the uh, Air Cross Trainer 3 Low. Originally dropped in 1990. It's kind of like the like the cousin of the Bo Jackson sneaker. You know, it was like heavily influenced off that. Came out in that like Nike Air Trainer line from the early 90s. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is the Supreme rendition and uh, came out in 2021. You know, little Gucci colorway. Yeah. Then the, they did the other colorway too that was like more like a Rasta colorway. It was white with the green, red, and yellow on it. Yeah. It was fire. But yeah, that's those. Yeah, I like those. Yeah, the is dope for sure. The Supreme on the back? Yeah, with the Supreme on the back. Have you ever been to that famous grandmother lady, uh, grandma, Supreme lady in New York City? No, I haven't been there. I know all about that no, spot, though. Know. Yeah, yeah. I think it's called Unique Hype, okay. if I'm not <laughs> mistaken. Let me look that up, though. Unique Hype. She just has the most supreme, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's this old Asian, uh, Asian chick, and uh, she she just she's got all the supreme there, and she's had it for a minute, and yeah, yeah, she's at a, just at a store. Yeah, yeah, um, she she has like a resale store, you know. Oh, nice. Yeah, you know, Supreme, right. Babe, all, all you know, just all yeah, streetwear yeah, and uh, shit. Uh, uh. But yeah, she's been there a long time. And yeah, smart. She's like famous off this shit, just being the lady with the crazy store. No, that's dope. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's there definitely. It's, there it's, you it's, go. I was looking that shit up, but yeah, it's unique hype. Yeah, unique hype. Yep. 
How's it? Oh, speaking of uh, big up and businesses, do we like who who we want to big up local business this week? <coughs> we didn't do that shit last week. But. <coughs> uh, let's. I mean, who's picking? I picked the last one. Stu Herbie's not playing. I know we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we just I got a couple much. in mind, but if somebody else wants to pick. Shout out to Herbie's. Want that the yeah, other word. Day. Herbie's, that's that shit. Uh, we did Son of Egg? No. Nope. Son of Egg. Son of Egg. Shout out to Son of Egg. Son of Egg. They be doing right right concerts the corner, there. Right here in Rensselaer, they, right across from the train station. They be doing shows there. They really be showing love to the local music scene, which is fucking dope. Word. And uh, they're just doing their own thing over have, there. It's uh, fire. Love their chicken sandwiches and their chicken uh, the menu rice great. and all mm-hmm. that shit. Shit is delicious. Sustenance to the dispensary and all that. Shout That's out. That's a fact, though. The little Justin fried chicken. on an egg. Little popcorn chicken thing. Yeah. Should be, fire. Should be smack. Oh, uh, yeah. Got the boba and all that. Some tea the boba tea. Yeah. Pour it up. Yeah. Buddha. I'll take it. It's a good one. Oh, uh, yeah. Major love. Son of egg. What's up? Nice. Nice. What's on the egg? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, he de- he definitely wants to do an event with us at some point. Whatever that. I don't know what that looks like, but we'll figure that shit out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, make it work. Yeah. Uh, go do a podcast at his spot upstairs. Oh, we could definitely do that. I think it's so dope that they do shows there. Yeah, it yeah, inspired yeah. me. Yeah, sure. Maybe have it be a live performance. He's looking for the hip hop scene. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nothing. I got an idea. I wait till we're off the pod to say it, but yeah, got an idea for that actually. Ooh, got something cooking. Yeah. Something cooking. Something Let cooking. that boy cook. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Word up. What you got? Speaking of cooking up, cooking Jay, something. You got some. You, got some, got you know, I stayed with something. So, so no, you're, gonna, you're gonna rap tonight. I am actually. I'm gonna try oh, something no different. Way. Oh shit! Yeah, no, it's the same thing. Spin bars. All right. But Let's see if you can do this. This is a song that I had from a while ago. Shit, probably like ten years ago now. It's me, Merc, and Camtron called "What Is the Reason." And uh, is that what you were listening to in the office? Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Good shit. You know, you blow me up now because I blew you up earlier? Okay. That's oh, my bad. What the fuck you mean? Fuck you mean? What you uh, mean? But um, not this song. This is one of the songs. This is one of my favorite songs because, oh, like, I remember Cam's verse on this was just so crazy. Like, he went full alien mode on this shit. Alien like, mode full yeah, alien yeah. on this shit. So, um, but we got this in the stats. This is for when we come through with that, like, it was going to be on the Foster House project, but we wind up figuring out where it's going to land now. I mean, the Foster House project is going to gonna eventually come out because we do have a, several songs. We got mad, we got mad, yeah. mad songs on the Foster we, House project. Like halfway like done, at least halfway done. More, with that more than halfway done. We uh, put out an EP. Oh, yeah. The EP is already there. a nice little there, EP sure. right now. Mm-hmm. Whole bunch to. of shit. Thanks. I said... What is the reason? They say your curse is a blessing as long as you learning a lesson. What is the reason? I could be working the flexing or I could be hurting and stressing. What is the reason? Damn it, I can't understand it and I don't believe in coincidence. What is the reason? Why was I put on this planet? I just want to know what my mission is. What is the reason? Why does this shit keep on happening? I hate when this feeling come back again. What is the reason? That's because you reap what you sow and this hate what you've been manufacturing. What is the reason? Damn it, I can't understand it. And I don't see no fortune teller. What is the reason? Well, what's going on with this planet? And can we change it for the better? What is the reason? Why they teach a teacher's two teachers, Benjamin, made electricity? Why they be lying and trying to rewrite all the facts about history? Honestly, think we've accomplished a lot just within the last century. Ever since the roaring 20s, the world is roaring back in misery. I need to know what I'm missing, please. Why wouldn't I know this consistency? They call it all a conspiracy. Why is a piece of paper with his face on it giving us so much identity? I got a question to brighten the idea light on your kite with a different key. Why can I not tell if I'm still a caterpillar or they really just clipping wings? Why the uneven positioning? Why would you not take the heat off the tea if it's whistling? Would you rather have the bad things done to you or rather be the one who did the things? 
Why don't I feel like you listening? I guess my feelings ain't interesting without a trap instrumental that I can make into a simple ass song for the kitchen scene. What is the reason? They say your curse is a blessing as long as you learning a lesson. What, what is, is the, the reason? reason? I could be working and flexing or I could be hurting and stressing. What, what is, is the reason? reason? Damn it, I can't understand it. I don't believe in coincidence. What, what is, is the reason? reason? What's going on with this planet and what knowing my mission is? What, what is the reason? Why does this shit keep on happening? The hate when this feeling come back again. What is the reason? That's because you reap what you sow and I hate what you've been manufacturing. What is the reason? Damn it, I can't understand it and I don't see no fortune teller. What is the reason? What What's going on with this planet? And can we change it for the better? What is the reason? Buddha. Hey, Jack. Oh. Yes, sir. That yeah, is yeah, yeah. Uh, a good record. That is, that is and it's you, just man. sitting in the stash for mm-hmm. a decade. Chilling. It's true. Unreleased. Unreleased. Mm-hmm. Of we all spazzed on I got a question. Too. Yeah. What is what the is reason? reason? <laughs> what is the reason? <laughs> Why, Jack? I don't know. A good question. Tell us, Jack. Uh, well, all right. If I'm gonna, if I wanted to, like, actually come up with a reason, I would say it's because while we were recording all that shit, we were all just like every week coming back and working on something new, and never stopping to yeah. go back. And then we would go back and work on shit. We'll go through stages of going back to work on shit to get it to be like, all right, now we're ready to put it out, and then have all these we'd have all these plans, have to come up, hatch all these plans and schemes for how we were gonna put it out, and then go, even go. J- Jay fucking made merch and shit. This dude's got fucking notebooks and fucking oh, yeah. like surrounding for the for the record that the composition shit. There's music videos, all that shit. Yeah, yeah. is that out yet? No, right. The whole project. The whole no. project. Yeah, that's no. what I'm saying. But yeah. because, but well, because of all that though, because, because of, of that, like, like trying to get all, everything together perfect, that, and then that that didn't happen, and then it was just like, oh, well, like how do damn, I do it now? I have so many other. I had so much other, so many other songs that I've recorded since that. And now it's like, do I just drop the songs and just like, here you go, or do I like? Now I'm trying to figure out the best way to plan of attack to like, to actually have use so all of, it of the and do it. Yeah, so that it, it doesn't just fucking. No, SOP. An yeah, SOP. Right. And um, just because you didn't hit on it yet, like entrepreneurship as an artist, and y'all have all been entrepreneurs as artists, but yeah. um, Jay specifically like when did you uh at what point as an artist did you understand that being an artist is also a business and you need like streams of income streams of revenue and finding ways to get paid off your art that time period that he just explained to you yeah because before that i had just two who wasn't even just two yet he was two guns two guns and two gun, two gun, <laughs> yeah. what's his name? Two oh, gun, I two gun, two gun. Oh, son. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hey, don't God. even get me started. Oh, you already know. Oh, come on, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> but he, him, and I'm my so dad right made the fucking. They made a studio mm. in his house. Mm. So. You know, I had access to that for free. I didn't have to pay nothing. I was just creating, creating for years. And we was just built this chemistry and did the same thing. Yeah. We would make songs and songs and songs. And eventually we did put out some stuff. But most of the time it was that. And honestly, now that I'm saying that out loud, I'm realizing that that's where I've developed that habit. But the other thing is... Before that but, on my own. But. but the other thing is, is that like, if you're being ultra fucking productive and ultra... Uh, I don't know. You just put you're just you're just being That's you're just in the studio hours. and you're put right and yeah. you're like lapping yourself on things and you're looking back and being like, nah, I don't even want to put that out because that shit's not even close to what I'm doing right now. And mm-hmm. you're doing that as you're building that that repertoire up. Mm-hmm. It's like. That's just what happens. And then you put some of that stuff, though, that you're working on other people, they don't fucking know. 
Well, that's where you my get caught in the world of what it's like. His favorite fucking shit is the shit that y'all were doing Wait, back then. My man. bottle and where did my mm-hmm. cup go? I want alcohol, but I'm already fucked up though. I'm about to fall <laughs> and I don't need no help up because I'm gonna get down on the floor. 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 I don't know if I'm hot or low, so I'm gonna get down on the floor. Get down on the floor. See, so you already know, my, my porch. I don't know. If that's I'm the one low, that every time he sees you, he floor. says that's his favorite shit, right? Because that was that shit. That was that was everybody's <laughs> shit. No, listen, you think I'm playing with you. Yeah. That was everybody's shit. And everybody would come up to me like, yo, that wear my bottle? Yo, that wear my bottle? And that's kind of like, that for me would be the thing that would be like, okay, now I know which way I want to move. And like back then when I would get those reactions to people, that's why, like that was one of my first songs that I was rapping fast on. Mm-hmm. Like um, that style that I had then is so much, it's so prevalent here now. Mm-hmm. And I bring that time period up because that's when I was able to do it for free. Mm-hmm. And I was able to do it for the art and for the love and just for the fact that I had the opportunity to do it. And that's how I was able to get to that 10,000 hours. I'm sure I I doubled 10,000 hours by the time I met you. You know what I'm saying? Because I had multiple eras of studio time. After that, I had my own studio when I, I finally, when I made Loud Lyrics, that was when I first left the crib. Like that's when I left the nest. What were you recording on? Where was I recording? What were you recording on? Um, so I did Loud Lyrics with Tone Networks in Amsterdam. Yeah, we did that yeah, on Pro yeah, Tools. On. But when I was recording, I was recording on a mic with no... We didn't have a mixer. We didn't have... It was a fucking... Uh, there was a, a sheet that we hung in the closet. And we fucking... The mic was taped to the wall. And it was the most jankiest, ghettoish shit ever. And the shit <laughs> sounded horrible. I had no training i i learned how to you know press record and play and put my tracks where they needed to be and put my levels of volume and oh com- compression makes it sound better oh i'm oh i'm think i'm supposed to put some gain on this and let me just put this plug in here and just sat there until it i thought it sounded good and i learned some shit sound i good think enough. you know what i mean yeah. so because i still go back and listen to some of that shit and i hear it and i'm like oh all right cool but I say all that to say, that was when I didn't have to pay anything for it. That mm-hmm. was just it, when you were just doing. It was provided to me by God. Like mm-hmm. God gave me the opportunity right, because right. that's what I chose to do. So it was placed there for me. But with Merck, I couldn't. There was no free sessions. There was on the arm, like you could pay me when you got it. But there wasn't until later. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Once we started doing that Foster House, that yeah, time yeah, is when yeah. it started to be like, okay, we're gonna come together and work together for free. But before then, it was like, nope, you gotta pay that forty an hour for the quality. And yeah, that was, I was lucky. Did. I got grandfathered into the forty an hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's so no, nice. you think I'm Fast. playing? It's so real. When I would have my boys yeah. come to my sessions, and if they wanted to like take one of my hours. Yeah. They was paying for <laughs> you know what I mean? I was grandfathered in, you know what I mean? Um but that still I wasn't used to that. That's when you started. I wasn't used to that. So now I had to budget my time and that's when I'm like I'm going to the studio for three hours this week. I'm gonna make sure throughout this whole entire week I sit here with these headphones and make sure that when I get to the studio mm. I'm not wasting time mm. writing. I'm not wasting time on the mic trying to perfect my fucking tone or get my shit down. I'm gonna make sure that I got this shit memorized so I don't even need to look at it. I can just walk up and fucking spit it the fucking first take. You know what I mean? And he's seen that. Cosign, I will cosign that mostly. There was times where we did actually end up writing in the studio just for the just because that because right. yeah. the shit that he brought was already done. Yeah, right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, I got yeah. Like he'd come in with this shit written over some other beat and then lay it down and then go to the bathroom and smoke and I'd work on a beat and he'd come out and be like, oh shit. The That's what Merc is crazy. He'll make a beat in the session like we're just going, oh, i need a beat that sound like this and like he'll make the beat type shit like, yeah i do I, I, from scratch he's old merc everybody in Albany always knew merc been the best studio because mm-hmm. it's like he's worth the quality he's worth the whatever this price was like 
No, but it's crazy. Yeah, I, I, that, I do have my masters in yeah, the shit, yeah. and then I taught it. So yeah. like, at, when you put, when you get all that and you mix it in, at ten thousand hours, like fucking fifteen years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. then, when talking that type of shit, it's just when you do shit for that long, it's, mm-hmm. you know, and then you're the one of one around here that like nobody else that fucking lives around here has had like did that. Mm-hmm. That and that. Not saying that it's fucking. It's true. It's yeah, just no, what it's it a is. fact. No, it's just it's like total there's fact. people, there's dudes like I, right, for example, Dave that taught at the school that I taught at. He doesn't have his master's degree. That dude's been making music in his bedroom since he was fucking twelve years old, mm. and he like, and he's super fucking smart. So he's done his research, yeah. and he like took a master class with like so they're you know self taught but also not self taught mm-hmm. but fuck smart ass dude, you know. Because well, in this world, if you want to go learn it, you can. Yeah. When I got the job with Steve, mm-hmm. he didn't give a flying. F- he didn't even ask to see school credentials. He mm-hmm. didn't give a shit about them. He yeah. didn't. He just wanted driven, and you know and about you know, audio. Yeah, yeah. And uh, first thing he did, see, see no, I wasn't tone deaf. I told, he, yeah, yeah. He'd see if I was tone deaf. When you were in the class with me, one of the main points that I fucking told every class and I you know I said this to you guys was like the piece of paper that you get doesn't fucking matter from this like to everybody was like oh I can't wait till I have this certificate mm-hmm. like you go you know, yeah the certificate from the new school guys you think that's gonna get you somewhere <laughs> you got grind, good baby. fucking luck you know why you're here you're here to learn what we're gonna teach you yeah. don't come here and like fuck around fuck your way through it right. and then be like whatever and uh, and not fucking learn anything yeah because you're gonna get this piece of paper at the end because yeah. you know there were some dudes in the class that were on it like that like <laughs> i would get this <laughs> piece like, yeah. like yeah. it's just on after like this, oh right? my god yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you're fucking delusional yeah. come come like you gotta get the knowledge the yeah. knowledge is so just scotty proves the point he's like Go get a get a job with Steve at Stola. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't yeah. give this a fuck dude's about got a piece platinum of paper. records. I mean, like yeah. 20, 30 platinum records. He's, the guy I worked for. Yeah. And, and yo, uh, oh, when you started working with him, he put you into his system, or he let you just rock. Kind of let like me what? just fucking rock. Let you just. Rock. I was there, so he didn't have to be. Mm. <laughs> like, he just let me run this fucking studio. <laughs> like, yeah, I did all the sessions he didn't want to do. And you just yeah. It started up, the first thing I did. Did he give you like a template though That's to the work out of, or did you just like do? Did you just start with? Your so a lot blank, of it, most of it, your like, template that you left school don't, with. Don't get me wrong. Um, I had a uh, no. I uh, I did mostly recording. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, he would yeah. do mixing. And and, would uh, mix, yeah, but there was plenty of times I did mixing. I did my own thing. You know. Yeah, yeah. Because there's a million. No, you got there. your class. Fucking, you did. I I taught the first half and Dave taught the second half in that class, right? No, he no. T- he taught the whole fucking oh, year. No, no, that's right. Yeah. It was the whole. It was the next. No, because you were. Only the thing f- Dave did was going to <laughs> talk Pro Tools on a fucking. <laughs> okay, yeah, that a was the first. Time, so like, you were my first year yeah, that yeah, I yeah. did. Like, I got to that I was running. Yeah, yeah, yeah all right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was fucking great. And just quick, Merck, I want to, not to give away your sauce, but I always admired a way, like, I guess an a, a SOP that you had when you was running your studio. Yeah. So you had the setup to where it's like, you would have yeah. your whole month booked out at the beginning of the month and give people yeah. days and hours in the day to yeah. where it was the same time every Thursday, the same time, like, yeah, you had yeah. a lot of Friday sessions like that. Nah, I, I, would, I had a, was I, a lot of what I did. Where'd you come I, up with that? Like, how I, you, I, Well, I just had a, enough people who wanted to make it a weekly thing <clears> where I was me. able to get, like, lar- and then it was like, it became, what happened, it became like, I don't want to do single hour Right. sessions anymore this shit is whack right. it's, I yep. can't even do anything it's like you're rushing through the vibe isn't there like so I started doing like two hour minimums mm-hmm. fucking four hour minimums at, at one I ended that's how I ended it I mm-hmm. was doing four hour minimums mm-hmm. like yeah you, you want to book with me book for four hours oh, I'm, not. Oh, <laughs> I'm doing two sessions a day oh, oh. 
and now, you would kind of know how much month at the top of each month, like what you know, what yeah, you were bringing because, in that yeah. month because of that. Like, yeah, that's because crazy. when you're a lot of studios don't. Yeah, when you it. when you work it like that, and it's and it, and it's based on what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. It's not based around any other. Okay, you know what I mean. Like people weren't coming to, to Foster House for just for the for for anything but me. That's mm -hmm. why when I left, like mm -hmm. I couldn't like sell the business yeah, it wouldn't in yeah, good conscience you yeah, know what i mean I, can i give my perspective yeah, just buy on a that bunch of equipment yeah. essentially can, can yeah, i right. give my perspective on that yeah please so when i got introduced i basically was like okay this is where i want to be mm -hmm. like this is where i want to create and like i felt the connection you know what i mean and i was like i want to do this and i wanted to do it here is my my thought process but behind my friday night 9 to 12. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> It kept me from spending money. Mm -hmm. Kept me from being outside. And it kept me consistent. Mm -hmm. And it kept me knowing what to expect. Knowing what my window was. Yeah. Knowing what I can accomplish in that window. <coughs> and knowing that it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And but from there, then it was like, we had so much room to create. Mm -hmm because it was like even like if we get to a point where it's like we would get stuck on something we would just pivot like he would say like we would be like oh right, we're done with this one all right let's just start something completely new and then just start from scratch from scratch mm -hmm. or, what we doing? you know what i mean fucking jay just go and like sing into the mic real quick and loop it up and fucking throw some drums on it mm -hmm. with a bass line and then and then he's fucking freestyling shit like we did all sorts mm -hmm. of shit we got we got half so many half songs yeah, too that sure. we started and never finished yep. or like i also got to say though so important to say is how much time we spent not working yeah because we spent a lot of time talking that's true and just, and just communicating and building. just getting to yeah. yeah building and like even just like i feel like after a while it became like therapy like the same thing with everything i just said about the, st the session it's like we knew what to expect it's like i know i'm gonna see my boy this friday and i know we're gonna get we're gonna into some shit up, yeah, yeah, gonna talk, talk, you know? talk some shit talk some shit for sure for so sure. it just got to that point where like it became my home like it, it was my home like and that's why like even when it like when it was ended, was your foster home? It was, fo foster, it was, it was foster home, bro. It totally but that's a, fucking but that's was. A, it but totally that's was. Like, that's, a, the, the, that's the thing. Like, is that's like the like where how? All right. So I like made this shift at at some point in my perspective of what I was doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So before I was like, all right, I'm gonna just. Um, cram as many hours in and as many people as I can do in a day and download as many records off of YouTube as I can and whatever and fucking and just hit as many people through a template and just fucking rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat but I realized and I did that for years and I realized that and then there would be like a couple of breaks in there uh, like where Jay would come and we'd bang out a fucking EP and then I might not, and then I might not see Jay for like three more months but I knew that that was gonna happen, and that so I had those. But then yeah. I realized that those were the moments that I was like, "What the fuck?" So then, like, uh, what had Jay coming weekly was me being like, "What?" Uh, I pitched this shit to him like, "Yo, what if I just remake all of the beats that you bring in?" And yeah. I, and so every time you bring in a beat you just let me remake it, and it's and like all you're paying, you're not paying for the beat. You just pay for the studio time that it took to make the beat. I don't. You don't have to pay me for the beat. We'll just. What happens with the song? We'll break bread. But in the meantime, it's just us working together, making music together. Oh, but I need. But the studio's got to be booked, so you got to pay for the studio time. Cool. That's great. So then he was like, "Fuck that. We can be fucking super productive like that. I'll come every week." So he was like, "Cool." So then him and the team came every fucking week. Yep. And then if it so was would like split, top, break the time up. If I didn't have the bread or whatever the case, or if I didn't have, if I didn't come up with nothing new, and and my man's did, just, just two. Two and true blue, it, you or, know true, what I mean? or true blue would take it. But Friday was consistent for front page Fridays, for front page Fridays for a really, really fucking long time. And then it, then it definitely for a while fell on Jay's shoulder solo. Yep. And Jay, yep. 
um, really held it down for for like years yeah. at that point. But it was uh, c- the consistency. That was one of the fucking things when I was like when I uh, was looking for people to come to bring in to work in the store mm-hmm. about Jay. And I was like, if nothing else, this motherfucker is consistent. Like mm-hmm. every fuck, I know I was gonna see him, right. and that every Friday he had the consistent vibe about him. Always positive, always in the fucking like, always vibing. And I believe me, I understand that. The studio is like a the magic wonderland yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Like yeah. that was the thing about doing that for a fucking living. Now tell me if you had a similar experience, Scotty, is that what? that in general the people that come to the studio, they're like uh in their happy place and they're having fun and shit. For the most part. For the most part. I, <laughs> I had to deal with some cats. Oh, Some yeah, rowdy yeah. cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> go ahead to the studio. They be on the drink. I had to kick a couple people out. Like uh, that's yeah, the only yeah. reason Steve liked me. The yeah, other, yeah. Uh, the other engineer. I don't know if he still works there or not. If he does, sorry. But uh, Steve didn't like that you were soft. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't take shit from the clients. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So like, and uh, yeah. Yeah, that's uh. But yeah, uh, there was great clients, and then there was, you know, wild ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, but see, here's the thing: I had some um, great clients have wild nights, though. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what? And, and they're just having too much fun. You know? That's what it is. Yeah. And they, yeah, they end up too drunk, too, and it's like, too drunk, and then they're doing, and there's like, yo, there's eight of us in here, it's arguing, like, and they're arguing with each other yeah. over dumb shit, getting mad, loud shit, like, ah, you're like, yo, yo, and at the armory, oh. you had space, yeah, yeah, so, mm. uh, we did not at stage one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not stage one, uh, plain truth, plain oh, truth, I missed that space, and, oh uh, man, that was like, that was the, the armory greatest. space, hell oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, you guys had a lot of space there, it was different there when shit got. You know, motherfuckers drinking and yeah. I don't know. Uh, Shit got wild sometimes. Uh, a lot of people's asking about THCA. Any yeah. Comments or remarks on it, or it just explaining what it is. Like people hear that, and it's different than just THC. It don't sound like it's just THC, but we're like, what is it? And so and there you go. It's basically the form of THC that's not like digestible it's not like decarboxylated de- it's not decarboxylated it hasn't uh, you know hasn't been converted to THC mm. so what do you mean and it's not digestible like you're not supposed to smoke it it's not like it, you won't do anything it won't bind to your CB1 receptors and it won't get you high whether it's with edibles or smoking well, it's, smoking it would decarboxylate it. But that's what that's, I was about to yeah. explain. Like, uh, the flame de- decarbs it when when you're smoking. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the heat from the flame. Mm. But with edibles, you got to decarb your product before you make edibles with it. If you were to just eat flour by itself, mm-hmm. you could eat an ounce. You're not going to get high. It's because the weed hasn't been decarbed. It has to be brought to a certain temperature mm. before oh. it can get you high, essentially. All right. So, like, why is there a conversation around it right now, then? Like, what's going on with it? Because people are growing stuff with extremely high THCA counts, and knowing that it's essentially just regular weed, and people are selling it legally oh, under the guise of THCA. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, So people are... Because it's... So it's basically a legal... Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, like, yeah, I think so. I just hear, hearing a lot about it, and... I was wondering what what it, what was happening with it. Like, what? Why is it a conversation thing right now? And that's what's happening. It's like it's like a loophole in a way. What's that? It's like a loophole in a way to like sell cannabis. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, okay. for sure. Yeah. Oh, are, are we saying too much right now? Is no, that, no, no. Like, I think it's uh, like it's like uh, low in THC but high in THCA. Is that yeah. what we're talking about? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, and it's like sold so, as so like CBD weed, 
or is it it's basically a, in that sense? That's what I'm gathering. I'm, I'm not, I'm and not so it's completely low, up the CBD subject. weed is low and not, it has to be below, it's like 0.3% yeah. THC, but it's not, but it doesn't have to be, but THCA can be whatever. And it just turns into THC once it's lit, basically. Basically. Oh. Okay. Doesn't work in edibles the same way. Mm. But it does Ooh, when you smoke out. it. Is that that's the that's, that's the, the science that's what behind I fucking it. gather. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. What, yeah, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Absolutely. Hmm. There's actually a formula you can to get the actual THC percentage. Ryan just fucking told me it yesterday, actually. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta get Ryan. Yeah, on. this fucking guy. We gotta get get him on the this pod. This fucking just, guy. Just for one episode. He just had me drowning Season here. Two. I was like, oh, what's Ryan was here? <laughs> we get Ryan up in this bitch no, just for right. one episode. That would be great. But you did some you did some work with Ryan, right? In the in the yeah. So see, Dill's not yeah. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. almost left without doing like that. Yeah, yeah, you gotta wait for Ryan. I don't think Ryan wanted to do it either, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> shout out to him for doing Max. it. Where's the fact? Well, shout out to Ryan. Shout out to Ryan. Stage one dispensary. Yeah. Stage one podcast. Like yeah. to see the legal. Stoop yeah. to store. Boodle. Boodle, boodle, boodle. Fuck boodle, boodle. it. Boodle. That, this shit was a, this was a high ass episode. Oh yeah, for sure. I'm yeah. high as fuck. Yeah, I'm, I'm fucking dead. ripped. Uh, as always, though. Peace.